provocative. This is Naples. Buried in the data about this ancient Italian city is a paradox. Why does this region with the youngest population in Italy also have the highest cancer rate, including very rare tumor cases affecting children and women under the age of 40? In other words, why are people who shouldn't be dying of cancer dying of cancer? Answering that question leads us to Camorra, one of the world's most violent criminal organizations. Camorra is a group better known for killing people the old-fashioned way. Over the past 30 years, Camorra has murdered more than 4,000 people in this region. That works out to one every three days. The only way you exit that situation is feet first. There's no escape. Camorra rakes in $25 billion per year from many businesses, including waste management. And it's their illegal dumping of toxic waste that caused those shocking cancer rates. But what made Camorra powerful enough to wantonly and openly poison the people of Naples? It began with their highly profitable move into the drug trade. My clan had six, seven hundred people. It's like an army. This man, we'll call him Pasquale, was only 11 when he got into the family business. My grandpa was a Camarista. They weren't like the Camaristi nowadays. In those days, Camorra trafficked in fruit and garlic. Once there was respect for kids, for women, now this doesn't exist anymore. They kill more. Two brothers now could murder each other just because they're from different factions. There's a loud minority of delinquents who claim attention because the honest people don't make headlines. Camorra took over entire buildings, converting them into drug supermarkets. This place is called Le Vele, a haven for Camorra drug dealers, and home to more than 300 families. We needed an insider, a member of the crime family that would tell us how the drug business operated. We've established contact with a former Camorra drug dealer named Gaetano, who agrees to speak about this secretive organization. Vocative sent investigative producer Jean-Claudio Angelini to talk to him inside Le Vele. He served 10 years in prison. He says we will be safe with him, but as we approach this rotting building, I can't help but think of the hundreds of murders that took place in this one block radius. I could hear the voices of the lookouts warning the dealers inside that we were coming in. Levele is just one of many locations in a drug distribution network that makes hundreds of millions of dollars for Camorra. I was able to make up to 2,500 euro a day. They thought I got talent. Talent matters also in criminal activities. Some of the people who live inside Levele agree to show Vocative what it's really like. We were walking around just to get down. We were surrounded by kids and there's syringes. I have to look, I have to be careful where I'm putting my feet. There's two syringes right there. And there's kids that are just used to this like it's nothing. There's some people back there that they're complaining. They don't like the fact that we're here, we're filming. So my guide here is, is going out to talk to them. That talk didn't go well for our crew and they had to get out pretty fast, but they still had company. Are you filming? As soon as we left, a scooter on the left was taking a video of us. Our producer checks in with Gaetano to see if they are in danger. We don't pants up, bro. Okay. We don't pants up. We don't have any success. We don't have any success. But we decided to stay in the zone. Absolutely. The drugs are a key to Camorra's power. They supply the profits needed to buy protection for their other illegal activities, including that business just outside of Naples that is actually causing the high cancer rates. The disposal of toxic waste. 
questi proprio perché ci devono fare un parco che si sarebbe chiamato Camorra decided to traffic in toxic waste management coming from northern Italy These guys would then drive down to the countryside around Napoli and bury all sorts of stuff everything from nuclear rods to deadly dioxins One way people may be getting sick is from animals like buffalo who eat the toxins the poison passes into their milk potentially turning an order of tomato and buffalo mozzarella into a killer caprese. Egidio Giordano is leading a movement of angry citizens, fighting to stop the dumping and clean up the mess. But the mobsters have friends in high places. We were protesting. Then, the government came with the army and broke it up. Many of us, me included, were arrested. Then they created a law making these dumping sites into military zones, which makes it pretty clear. The corrupt officials are in bed with Camorra and are making billions of dollars as they pollute the land and poison the people. The GDO is escorting us to uh, one of the toxic uh, waste dumps. It's a military zone now, so we're not even supposed to be uh, driving around here. Possiamo girare? Okay, so keep, keep filming. direttamente dal, dal governo. Infatti eh, c'è scritto residenza del consiglio. So basically was what the GDS explained to me that on the second line there it's, it's saying the waste here is not dangerous and it has the signature of the state. So it's been approved by the state. Truckloads of poison dumped in plain sight. Official signs saying it's all okay. Life in the land of Camorra. Bottom line is that in Italy, criminality has so deeply infiltrated into the state's institutions that it's become part of the state. Luigi De Magistris, mayor of Naples, is a former city prosecutor who knows that fighting Camorra means battling his fellow government officials. Threats and impediments came from officials rather than from shotgun armed mafioso. The local police chief also seems to have the right intentions. He's been cleaning out the famous drug supermarkets. We are making arrests and confiscating a ton of drugs. We are also literally tearing down the walls and gates which Camorra builds to defend its turf in these housing projects. When they see the action against Camorra, hopefully people understand they are not alone. We've reconquered, we've achieved a lot, but it's far from a definitive victory. We can't allow these people to keep on profiting on our health and our rights. Take on this mission. This is the only instrument that we have left to improve and leave something behind. This land needs redemption, and to free our land, we need some pride. We want to give a future to our children and to our land. <laughs>